Let's talk about Lenz's Law in this video. Lenz's Law is a sort of empirical law that allows you to figure out how induced currents behave in a loop. And let me just talk about that now. So Lenz's Law is about finding the direction of induced currents. Okay, a lot in that sentence there. First of all, you're probably comfortable with directions. Currents can certainly have directions. They can go one way or the other. Uh, so that's the direction of currents. But where does induced come from? Well, the induced here can sort of be extrapolated back to another video where we talked about EMF and how moving a metal in a magnetic field produces a voltage. Lenz's law often has a slightly different or the same, but in this case it's a bit different. What we're going to do here is we have a metal coil right here, and this will not move. We're just going to keep that fixed just to do the setup. But what we do have, we have a bar magnet, which we can put on our hand, and we're going to move the magnet. So in the EMF video, which is uh, in this series, we move the metal relative to the magnet. Here, we're going to move the magnet relative to the metal, but the effect is the same. Let's see if we can figure it out. So what happens here is if I, there's magnetic field lines which come out of this compass here, which are going to sort of go through the loop. And the loop is connected to a very sensitive meter here, which sort of reads 0, minus 10, or 10. So what will happen is if I take this magnet here and push it towards the coil, in other words, I move it, when the magnet's moving, I move it towards the coil, what you'll see, and I hope maybe you'll see this demonstration maybe in class or something, is this needle will move to here, or maybe not to 10, maybe somewhere in between. And then if I stop, if the magnet stops suddenly in this region right here, the needle will move back to zero again. But then if I'm holding the magnet over in this position in the coil, then I abruptly pull it out, the needle will go back the other way. And as soon as I stop moving the needle, or the needle, stop moving the magnet, pardon me, or the magnet is too far away, the needle, will go back, the needle will go back to zero again. So again, to repeat the experiment, if I push the magnet towards the coil, the needle will go this way. If I pull the magnet back away from the coil, the needle will go the other way, towards the minus 10. So if I just keep pushing the magnet, pulling it, pushing it, pulling it, pushing and pulling it back and forth, I'll see this needle just start swinging back and forth and back and forth. But remember, this is a voltmeter here. So what you're actually doing by moving the magnet is you're actually generating volts. So yes, just like the EMF video here, by moving the magnet near the coil, you're actually generating electricity as well. So you could take these two leads here if you wanted to and connect them to everyone's favorite electrical device, a light bulb. And if you move the magnet hard enough and fast enough or have enough coils and stuff, you get some light out. You actually will generate electricity that way. So what Lenz's Law allows you to figure out then is, well, which way would the needle actually deflect? Uh, but maybe not even at that level. They'll at least allow you to determine what direction the current will go in the coil. Because you might think, well, if the needle deflects to the right, it means the current was going one way. If the needle deflects to the left, it means the current was going the other way. Lenz's Law allows you to figure that out. So let's take a look. So the statement of Lenz's Law is something you should probably commit to your head there and sort of work the logic out here. It works like this. An induced current. Again, okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Induced current always generates a B field that opposes change in B that is happening. Okay, boy, lots to talk about here. Okay. An induced current. So first of all, we're talking about the induced current, and if you remember the setup before, where we had the loop that went to the meter with a needle on it, and we had the magnet here. When the magnet wasn't moving, the needle stayed at zero. When the magnet moved towards the loop, the needle deflected to 10. When the magnet was pulled away from the loop, it went to negative 10. So the question is, what is causing this needle to flip back and forth? Well, it's an induced current. So obviously, when you move the magnet, you must be inducing or forcing some current to flow in this coil right here. And that's called the induced current. So an induced current is what this, this, this passage starts with here. We're talking about the one that is appearing in the coil seemingly out of nowhere because you're moving the magnet. That's the induced current. So we're saying the induced current always generates a B field. Always generates a B field. So like, wait a minute, where's that coming from? Well, 
one thing we've definitely learned um, about this magnetism thus far, discussed in several other videos here, is that B fields come from currents. Okay? And a simple example that we have here, we have the B field due to a straight piece of wire, mu naught i over 2 pi r. And we have equations for magnetic fields because of loops and all kinds of things here, but the bottom line is when you have a current, you also get a magnetic field. So B fields come from currents. So just because a current is induced doesn't mean it can't have its own magnetic field, and indeed it does. An induced current is a current like any other, so it will generate a B field. So it's going to generate its own B field that opposes. Opposes is a huge word in Lenz's law. In fact, it's really the epitome of the law here. That opposes the change in B field that's happening. And the reason why I chose this word happening here, this is some external change here that isn't really a part of the system. It's like, for instance, because I'm moving the magnet. That's the happening or the external change in magnetic field there. That's because of something that I'm doing right there. That's the external one right there. So I'm forcing this change in magnetic field on the coil. Okay, so an induced current always generates a B field that opposes the change in the magnetic field that's happening. Let's look at a few examples. See if you can sort of get that in your head and look at some examples. So we'll dispense with a meter now and just to focus on magnets and loops. Okay, so here's a loop. And this side's coming towards us here, and this side's sort of going back. I'll draw it thinner. So this is the near side right here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a magnet. Here's the north side. Here's the south side. And I'm going to shove this magnet. Magnet. Here's the magnetic field lines. Okay. Now, when nothing's moving, there's no change in magnetic field, so there won't be any current in here. Remember, Lenz's law is about trying to pose a change. But now, if I take this magnet and start to shove it towards the loop, what's going to happen is this B is going to increase. Why is it going to increase? Because simply because I'm moving the magnet closer to the loop there. The magnetic field will increase. So if the magnetic field is increased, Lenz's law would like to oppose that change. So Lenz's law then would like to induce a magnetic field that points the other way. So let me make sure I keep the perspective proper on this loop right here. So these magnetic field lines are sort of, this is the near side that's towards us right here. It goes towards like that. So what the loop, the induced current is going to try and do, it's going to try to create a magnetic field not to the right, because if it was to the right, that would tend to increase this magnetic field that's happening, or the one because I'm moving the magnet. So it's going to try, try to induce a, magne a magnetic field which actually points this way. Because this is the only way the induced magnetic field can oppose this change. In other words, atom vectorally, if you see a blue magnetic field increasing to the right, why don't you apply your own green mag magnetic field to the left to try to cancel it away? So the induced magnetic field is going to be to the right. So then what you do is say, okay, well, put your fingertips in the direction of say, suppose the current's going to go up on this front side here. If I wrap my finger, fingertips back under the loop through it like that, that will point in that direction. So it looks like it's true then. The direction of the induced current then in this loop, let me get a different color here, is sort of going to be up. That's going to be the direction of the induced current right here. And if you connected the loop to some meter, it would cause the needle to deflect in one direction or the other. Draw the same loop now. Thick side over here, thin side going back like that. And I'll have the magnet like this. Here's that magnet again, the same magnet. This is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. And what we'll do here is, well, let me see, maybe draw it in the same color if I can here. Here's the magnetic field lines because of this magnet. Like this, and they're still pointing this way because magnetic fields come out of North Poles. Go back into South Pole, but we won't worry about that. And again, this is the part that's in front of us. And so that, what, what would happen now? So again, in the top figure here, I'm moving the magnet towards the loop. What would happen now if I pull this magnet? Let me see, let you see some of this thing here. Towards the loop. This is what happens if I pull this magnet away from the loop. So back the other way. So what's going to happen? Well, if I pull this magnet away from the loop, that's going to have the effect of decreasing this B field right here. So this blue B field is going to go down because the magnet's getting farther away from the loop or... It's getting less dense, however you want to think about it. Now, when the magnet is actually undergoing that move like that, what is Lenz's law going to say? Well, remember, Lenz's law wants to oppose that change. Lenz's law would really like to build up the magnetic field again. So if you have a magnetic field to the right, which is getting weaker, how do you build it up? You induce a magnetic field that points this way, inside the, in, well, in the region of a loop. This will be the inducing right here once again. So now I think, well, what direction of current must happen in the loop to cause the induced field to be that way? Again, remember, this is the near edge right here. If I put my thumb 
going down on this side and wrap through the loop. I had my fingertips out pointing that way. It looks like if I had an, a current coming down this way like that, that would be the direction of the current, the induced current right there. So there's two examples there of Lenz's law sort of at work there. We can actually figure out what the direction of the induced current would be. And again, if this was connected to a meter because the current's going in the opposite direction, it'll cause the needle on the meter to deflect in the opposite direction also. So we can sort of reproduce that experiment we started this video with. This causes the needle, say, to deflect right. This causes it to move left. So as I move the magnet towards the loop, I get a current in one direction. As I pull it back away from the loop, I get a current in the other direction. And that's the nature of Lenz's law. So I hope you can sort of remember that here, the way it works with loops here. Lenz's law here. The core idea here is to oppose changes in B field. And often the idea of Lenz's law is to uh, vectorially add or subtract B to achieve, and I'll just put an arrow here, this, to oppose that change. So again, if a B field gets weaker, if B field's going down, then you really want it to go back up again. Or if a B field's going up, you really want it to go back down again. So you're looking for some, some sort of vector action here to cause that to happen. And your goal here is to say, use the right hand rule to see what I, what current that is, will do this. And again, the this is this achieve here of opposing changes in the B field. So that's what Lenz's law really does. Opposes change in the B field allows you to find the direction of the current that would cause that B field opposition to occur the way you need it to. So there you go.